I'm going to walk you through citing an article from one of CSU Library's databases according to MLA 9 citation style. This will go pretty fast because the point of this tutorial isn't to tell you everything there is to know about citation. There's just too much. The point is to demystify the process a bit. We start with the author. That's usually somewhere around the top of the article, and if you got it from a database, there'll be more information in the place where you downloaded it, or, depending on the database, there might be a helpful information page at the front of the article. The author is Edward I. Condren, but we can't just copy the name right over. MLA requires the author's name to be inverted. Condren, comma, Edward I., and we only have one author, so we add a period to indicate this part's done. The article's title comes next. Two things you should know about article titles. The first thing is that when you copy them into a citation, you format them by MLA rules. See, this title is printed in all caps, but MLA calls for it to be in title case. That's a technical term for capitalizing the first letters of all the important words, like this. The other thing you should know is that article titles are always surrounded by quotation marks. In MLA, quotation marks indicate small works inside of larger works. For example, this is an article inside of a journal. Anyway, we close the title with a period, which goes inside the final quote. That's the rule, and it just looks nice. Your citation so far should look like this. After the article title comes the journal. This is where the article lives, or what MLA calls the container. In this case, the container is a journal called the Chaucer Review. The journal title is usually found in smaller type, maybe at the bottom of the article, or maybe on your handy information page. Containers get their titles in italics because they're larger works and because MLA says so. No period after this title, though, because journals don't just have titles. They have volumes, issues, and dates. Each volume contains multiple issues. It's kind of like how TV shows are produced in seasons and episodes. Seasons are like volumes. Episodes are like issues. This article came from Volume 10, Issue 1. We indicate this by putting a comma after the journal title, a space, then V-O-L, that's short for volume, a period, a space, the number 10, a comma, a space, N-O, that's short for number, a period, a space, and the number 1. Next, we put a comma after the issue number, like so, a space, and drop in the date. Dates can be a little funky in MLA. Your article might give you just the year, a month in a year, a season in a year, or something else along those lines. The rule is this. Include as much information about the publication date as the source gives you. In this case, we see the issue was published in summer 1975, so we include that. And we still aren't finished with this section because we need the page numbers. And what do we do when we aren't finished with the section? Right, another comma, a space, and we indicate page numbers with the abbreviation PP. Stands for pages plural, if you were curious. And then a period, a space, the starting page, 87, a hyphen, and the ending page, 95, followed by, aha, a period, finally. Done correctly, your journal information should look like this. Lovely. But we're not done. At the end of the citation, we have to indicate the database the article came from. I found this one in JSTOR, which is spelled with all caps. That's its actual brand name, so we don't convert it to title case. Like all databases, JSTOR is also a container, so its title takes italics. Now let's talk URLs and DOIs. You'll need one or the other, but they're not equal. DOIs, that's short for Digital Object Identifiers, are preferable. Look for that first, starting on our handy cover sheet, and if you can find one, drop it into your citation like this. Put a comma after the database title, a space, then https colon forward slash forward slash doi dot org forward slash, followed by the number itself. 
make sure to leave no spaces between that last forward slash and the start of your DOI. You want it to work as a link if you paste it into a browser. Then add a period to close the section. If you can't find a DOI, that's okay. You just need a URL. But not any URL will do. Look for a link labeled permalink or stable URL. These are links that are guaranteed not to change, and they're usually way shorter and less hideous than the link you'll find in the address bar of your browser. Put a comma after the database title, a space, and then the URL. Look closely. See how the URL is black? There's no HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and there's no underline anywhere to be seen. It should always look like that. Then you end the section with a period. Done. Oh, there we go. A complete citation for an article from a database. Yours should look a lot like this. If they don't, you're probably doing something wrong. Oh, and one more thing. Indentation. MLA citations require a hanging indent. That means the first line of each citation starts at the left margin, but all subsequent lines are indented. Don't use the tab key for this. The spacing can be off. Instead, give it a hanging indent using your word processing software. Here's how to do this in Microsoft Word. Highlight your citations. Make sure you're in the Home ribbon. Then open Paragraph Settings using this tiny little box. In the Indentation section, open the menu labeled Special, select Hanging, and make sure it's set at a half inch. MLA also requires citations to be double-spaced, so while we're in here, let's open the Line Spacing menu and select Double. Hit OK, and there we go, a double-spaced citation with a hanging indent. That's the Works Cited entry, but what about in-text citation? Thankfully, that's not so bad, although there are a few ways to go about it, depending on whether or not you mention the author's name in the sentence. If you refer to the article without using the author's name, we give credit by putting his last name in parentheses at the end of the sentence, followed by the page number where the information comes from, like this. Easy enough. Now, if you do mention the author's name in the sentence, we only need to share the page number in parentheses, like so. So that's citing an article according to MLA 9th edition. Before you go, let me make one last recommendation. Get a copy of the MLA Handbook. It'll tell you how to cite anything and everything. 